One thing that I try to live by, especially nowadays, and since I wrote the book, I've been thinking more and more about this, is how do I want to live a memorable life? You know, I think if we go back to like the pandemic, right? How many people have memories from that period? Aside from the trauma of being, you know, locked up and seeing people die and all this stuff. Um, I think it's like one of these things where we were stuck inside looking at screens all day, doing the same thing with the same people. And so I don't remember much from that in terms of those good memories that you're talking about, right? You know, when I was growing up, my parents worked really hard for us. And, you know, we went on some vacations, but not very often. And I really try to do now vacations to interesting places as much as possible with my family because, like, those are the things that you remember, right? So I, I really do think about what's going to be like something that's memorable mm -hmm. and then just do it even if it's a pain in the ass because the experiencing self will suffer for that, but the remembering self will be like, yes, I'm so glad I did that. Do things that are very unpleasant in the moment because those can be reframed and enjoyed for many years to come. That's probably... <laughs> <laughs> uh, good advice, or at least when you're going through shit, it's a good way to uh, see the silver lining of it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of these things where if you have like people who you've gone through, I mean, so since you said it, I'll just say, since you've gone through shit with someone, yeah. and it's like, uh, that's a bonding experience often, you know? I mean, that can really bring you together. I like to say it's like there's no point in suffering unless you get a story out of it. <laughs> so uh, in the book, I talk about the power of the way we communicate with others and how that shapes our memories. And so I had this near-death experience, at least that's how I remember it, <laughs> on this paddleboard where just everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong almost. Um, so many mistakes were made and um, um, ended up like at some point just like basically away from my board, pinned in a current, like in this corner, like not a super good swimmer. And my friend who came with me, Randy, who's a computational neuroscientist, and he had just been pushed down uh, past me and so he couldn't even see me. And I'm just like, if I die here, you know, I mean, no one's around. It's, it's like, you just die alone. And so I just said, well, failure is not an option. And eventually, I got out of it and uh, froze and got cut up. And I mean, the, the things that we were going through were just insane. But a short version of this is, uh, you know, my, my wife and my daughter and Randy's wife, they gave us all sorts of hell about this because they were just like, where are we? They were ready to send out a search party. So they were giving me hell about it. And then I started to tell people in my lab about this and then friends and it just became a better and better story every time. And we actually had some photos of just the crazy things like this generator that was hanging over the water and we're like ducking under this thing or these metal gratings and I'm like going flat on, mm -hmm. and it was just nuts, you know? But it became a great story and it was definitely, I mean, Randy and I were already tight, but that was a real bonding experience for us. And yeah, I mean, and I learned from that, that it's like, I don't look back on that enough actually. Because I think uh, we often, ha at least for me, I don't necessarily have the confidence to think that things will work out, that I'll be able to get through a certain mm -hmm. thing. But my ability to, to actually get something done in that moment is better than I give myself credit for, I think. And uh, that was the lesson of that story that I really took away. Well, actually, just for me, you're making me realize now that it's not just those kinds of stories, but even things like periods of depression or really low points, to me at least, it feels like a motivating thing that the darker it gets, the better the story will be if you emerge on the other side. That to me feel feels like a motivating thing. So maybe if people listening to this and they're going through some shit, as we said, <laughs> uh, one, one thing um, that could be a source of light is that it'll be a hell of a good story when it's all over when you emerge on the other side.